Hey you all, before we begin this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to my opponent for this video, Fuzzy Huzzy. Uh, Fuzzy, thank you very much for challenging me for this game. Fuzzy is a subscriber to the channel and also happens to know some of the people that I know in real life. And when he mentioned some names that I kind of knew, I was like, oh, okay, cool, this is going to be good. Um, it got my blood boiling and I was really excited to play this game. So just want to give that quick shout out and let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to another online ranked match of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Jewelers Link Evolution. Today we are doing a subscriber showdown I'm playing against Fuzzy Huzzy, who is challenging me for the first time in Legacy of the Jewelist. Today I'm going to play my Autoguys deck, a deck which I wasn't planning to premiere this week. However, um, when Fuzzy challenged me, I wanted to give him a really good duel. But I didn't want to play my Orcus deck because I thought that would have been a little bit too predictable. Um, so, Autoguys is a control style deck. If you saw earlier this week, I uploaded a Subterra control deck video. They're very, very, very similar, although I would strongly argue that Orgeis is the better deck because the monsters have a better range in overall. So, um, typical first turn here, I set 5 and pass. Okay, I give the setup to Fuzzy Huzzy, and the first couple of turns in this, get in this duel here are very, very uh, slow, very straightforward. So, um, I'm going to cut around here, and we're going to skip forward a couple of turns to where we started to get into some action. So, uh, a couple of turns down the line, I've drawn into Ash Blossom and Autoguys Silk Quits. I finally got an Autoguys card, and Fuzzy is only set two cards and still has a handful of resources. And so, now I'm gonna normal summon my first Autoguys monster, Autoguys Silk Quitters. Silk Quitters has a couple of effects and I'll get into them when they're relevant, but first, Fuzzy Huzzy is gonna respond to my summon by activating Metaverse. Metaverse is a very, can be a very frightening card because it has the ability to activate a field spell card from your deck to the field. When this card is used in conjunction with certain field spell cards, it can really, really almost stop you from playing for that turn. So it can be a very, very powerful resource for control based decks that want to kind of just slow down the game. So I don't really want to give my opponent that option at this point, so I chain with Ash Blossom negating his uh, ability because he can also choose to add from deck to hand as well as activate from deck to field. Again, so we're going to pass forward and skip a couple turns here. And uh, what happened in the last turn here is Fuzzy just really passed and uh, he had to discard two resources. So if you're looking at his graveyard right now, he has now revealed that he has played Infernoids. And Infernoids are a strategy which is always... You, there's always a, an Inferno player at a high level YCS level kind of tournament. And there's always this one guy who's played Inferno who's doing crazy, crazy well, has made it to almost like top 32, and nobody wants to play against him because who gets ready for Inferno uh, nowadays? Nobody does, really. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% familiar with what Inferno do. I have played against him before, but. Um, it's like it's one of those things where I have to almost read the cards every single time I see them because I always forget what they do. To kind of give a rough breakdown of what the Inferno archetype does from my limited knowledge, um, the majority of the monsters have the effect where you can banish either one or two monsters to special summon them from your hand or graveyard to the field. However, the monsters you banish must have a level equal to or greater than the level of the monster you're trying to summon. So if you have a level 8 monster, you might just banish two monsters that add up to or exceed level 8 from your graveyard. And you can do that from the graveyard or your hand. So sending them to the graveyard isn't really a problem for a deck like this. They also have quick effects which can allow you to tribute one monster on your field to banish a card from their graveyard, which is what Fuzzy Huzzy just did with his Inferno and Tondo. What's special about Inferno is that they work really, really well with the field spell card, Layer of Darkness. Layer of Darkness makes it so that all monsters in the field are treated as dark monsters, and your opponent is allowed to tribute your, um, he will be now allowed to tribute my dark monsters to activate his cards. So, as you'll see, he's using Monster Gate, he tributes my Silquitters, and, um, is now going to get to resolve his effect. The reason why this is so powerful is because, um, Tributing cards is normally a cost to activate effects, so you don't really get an opportunity to respond to them before they get rid of your monster. So it can be really, really painful to deal with something like Layer of Darkness. Uh, from Monster Gate, he's able to summon Inferno Decatron, who is the level 1 card for this deck, and it's almost a toolbox of Infernoids in that it sends one Inferno card from your 
deck to the graveyard and it copies its effect. So Infernos have effects where they can um, negate monster effects, double attack, banish cards on the field, uh, destroy cards on the field. So Decatron is a really, really great resource. And like I said, the Inferno monsters can special summon themselves back from the graveyard. So Decatron really, really helps to fuel their deck and, and uh, load their graveyard with resources, as you can see Fuzzy Hussy is doing right now. He's now special summoned Anonsu, and Anonsu is a really, really big threat, so I'm going to respond in kind with Sodom Strike to negate the special summon. Um, unfortunately, Fuzzy's ready for me, and he's now got Red Reboot in his hand. He's going to pay half his life points to be able to activate his counter trap directly from his hand to the field. But by doing so, he negates my counter trap, and he stops me from using trap effects or activations for the rest of the turn. And then when you're playing a trap based deck like Autogeist, that really, really hurts. The downside, as well as paying half your life points for Red Reboot, is that by doing so, he also gives me a free trap card to set to the field. But when you have big monsters on the board where you can have someone like a 3k beater almost immediately, this could be enough to win the game here. Unfortunately, he isn't able to, oh, well, fortunately for me, I would say, he isn't able to summon another monster. However, he is able to do a lot of damage to me this turn. He then activates Void Imagination, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know what Void Imagination does. It says something about uh, making levels level 1 and all battle damage that he inflicts is half. I, yeah, I'm not really sure. But um, uh, he, he, I guess it allowed him to summon back in further the Tondel. Um, it also has an effect where you can send this card to the graveyard and Fusion Summon, an Infernoid card. I've never any, it's ever seen anyone use the Infernoid Fusion Monster, so... Considering he's using part of Extravagance as well, I'd be surprised if he's actually using that Fusion Monster. Uh, Layer of Darkness also, if you use, if you tribute a monster from your field, Layer of Darkness also gives you a token in the end phase, so... It's a crazy way of building resources, because he's going to tribute my monsters, and then he's going to get free tokens in order to uh, refill his build. Now, uh, cutting forward a little bit here, I've just used Metaverse, and Metaverse is going to allow me to activate Mystic Mind from my deck, which is a very, very powerful full spell card as well. And how this is works is is that for the rest, uh, while this card is faced up on the field, while my opponent controls more monsters than I do, my opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare an attack. And um, uh, because I have no monsters on my field, he's pretty much locked out of monster effects or attacking until I choose to make an actual play or he gets rid of my field spell card. Now, I tell you what, if I was in real life right now, I would be very, very tempted to put pressure on Fuzzy Huzzy and actually almost uh, run the clock and not actually uh, do any more plays to kind of force him to get rid of Mystic Mime. Because when you're in a duel on timer, uh, you have to make every decision count and no one wants to sit on the Mystic Mime and waste turns. So, he may have chosen to... Um, Stop um, uh, giving up this game and then got into game two or three. But we're not playing a match today, we only played a single duel, so um, that's not going to be too relevant here. So I am going to use personal spoofing, shuffling, auto guys protocol to add multi faker to hand. Because the last action was to activate a trap card, multi faker's effect allows it to be special summon to the field, and then I get to special summon another all guys monster from my deck to the field, and I'm going to go get a copy of Seal Quitters. Um, this is now going to let me have a level of interaction with Silk Witness, where I can target one of my All Guys cards, return it to the hand, and return one card my opponent controls back to his hand. Obviously, I want to get rid of Layer of Darkness in case this face down card can tribute away one of my All Guys monsters, and now we're going to pass turn and um, start my turn here because I don't want him tribute my cards. So in my turn here, um, like I said, I could just sit on the Mystic Mine, but all guys have to summon monsters to the field in order to gain control of the board. And so my options here are either I can sit on the Mystic Mine and run out the clock or try and deck him out, or I can start to build my board and then kind of um, uh, deal with Mystic Mine uh, being able to stop my own effects later on. And I'm going to go for the latter here because I would rather have more forms of interaction then just kind of sit on the Mystic Mine and hope that my opponent cannot deal with it. I use Infinite Impermanence to negate one of his effects, but mainly it's just to uh, get Motifake onto the board. And so Motifake is going to get summoned, but then I'm going to return it to my hand for cost, the Silkwitz effect, and bounce one of his monsters out. And this is going to allow me to special summon an All Guys monster from my deck as well. I'm going to go for All Guys Menace Seek. 
Metaseek will come out in defense. It does have a removal effect, but Metaseek also uh, floats when it is sent from the field to the graveyard. And we're going to use it as a material to summon out uh, Orgeist Hexia so I can search out more cards. Orgeist Hexia is a very, very powerful card. And um, it's going to help me a lot in this game because Orgeist Hexia has the ability or potential to be able to negate the activations of spells and traps. And I know Lair of Darkness is in his hand, so I really don't want him to use that card again. So I want to find a way to kind of be able to set up Hexia to negate his cards. Um, now, I have Solemn Strike on the board still because it was reset there earlier on. Um, so Silk is going to activate. I'm going to be able to get a copy of All Guys Protocol back from my graveyard. And then I'm going to use Metaseek's effect. And uh, Metaseek is going to let me add a card from the net to hand. And so I'm going to go for a... Uh, or guys Marionetta. Uh, Marionetta is also a really, really good card for the deck. You play three of them. And um, I'll explain more why you do so when I do a deck profile of this uh, video. Uh, if people want a deck profile for this, uh, want to see how all guys are built, do let me know. I'll be happy to do a deck profile for this as well. Uh, but for now, um, I need to get one more card on board. Hopefully, in order to um, set up my Hexia and then set up some interruption in the back row as well. We do have options here, so the first thing I think I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to um, summon out my Marionetta. Um, you see, it's difficult because I don't want to exceed having three monsters on board, um, because then I would be unlocked under Mystic Mine. Um, but I can still play on the two, and if I summon one more monster though, he will be able to use his monster effects. But I'm going to say fuck it, let's just go for it, and I normal summon all guys Marionetta. Orgeist oh, Marionetta, uh, when it is normal summon, allows you to set an Orgeist Trap card from your deck to the field. And so I'm going to go for Orgeist Manifestation, which is, has a Call of the Haunted style effect. Marionetta's second effect is that you can tribute one Orgeist card from your field, and then push summon one Orgeist monster back from your graveyard to the field. So it really is it's a great card. It uh, gets you resources from your graveyard and your deck. So it forms as a star and an extender in all in one card. And all guys' cards are just so very powerful. I go for Melisseek because if um, to use Hexia's negate effect, I have to tribute a card, an all guys monster that it points to. And Melisseek gives me more cards when I uh, when it is sent to the graveyard, so that's a okay for me. In the battle phase here, I'm gonna attack directly with Melisseek, and Melisseek uh, when it does direct damage to my opponent, allows me to send one card from um, his field to the graveyard. Melisic is such a powerful form of removal because one, it doesn't target, and two, it doesn't destroy card effects. It sends them, so um, it means that Melisic is a very versatile card and is able to kind of deal with many, many different decks that have forms of protection against targeting, removal, or destruction. And um, it's why all guys have almost survived for so long in the meta game. During the end phase here, because both players have two monsters in the field, uh, Mystic Mind is going to uh, commit Seppuku and it's going to destroy itself and. Um, that's no longer going to be a factor, but that's A-OK. -okay. At this point now, I've got a decent board of resources and uh, I've got plenty of interaction to kind of deal with Fuzzy Hussy. Um, it's still quite even. He has a graveyard full of monsters, which he can potentially make use of. And he also has five cards in hand, so it's still a very, very even game. And life points are still very close with one another. So this can be anyone's game, but this is also kind of the... Uh, the, uh, a very comfortable position for all guys. When all guys players have a uh, hexia on board and five back rows set face down, um, yeah, they're kind of a uh, very very comfortable with where they are right now. So um, still very very even can be anyone's game here, and we'll see what Fuzzy tries to do here. So uh, yeah, he's having a think, he's having a wonder. Um, Inferno is, yeah, like, they're, they're a really, really powerful strategy. I actually wanted to try and build them once, but because they haven't been reprinted in so many years, it can be very expensive. Opponent uses Layer of Darkness, and like I said, I really, really do not care for Layer of Darkness. So we are going to use Hexia. Hexia is going to tribute Metaseek, and then um, it's going to negate Layer of Darkness's activation. Hopefully he doesn't have any more copies in this hand because that would really suck. But Melisic is going to be able to activate now that it was tributed and set to the graveyard. You do have to be careful with Melisic or sometimes getting too far ahead with all guys cards. Because you don't run many all guys monsters in your deck. And I actually choose not to activate my all guys Melisic at this point in time. 
Bit of a dumb move. I don't really know why I did that. I could have got Unkin Kiri from net to hand. I think I actually just misclicked by mistake. But I'm not, again, really too, too worried about the situation. Very, very comfortable. So I have tons of negates on board from my trap cards. Fuzzy is going to make a link to. He's going to link into Nightmare Phoenix. And he is going to try and destroy one of my spawn trap cards. So let's see which one he does here. In order to use Nightmare Phoenix, he has to discard a card for its cost. So he discards one of his Inferno monsters. And he targets my set Solemn Strike. So he remembers that was Solemn Strike and that was Carbus of Threat. But I'm going to respond with Infinite Impermanence. Which is not only going to negate the monster effect of Nightmare Phoenix. But also going to negate the effect of his Void card that's in the same column as Infinite Impermanence. Now that Impermanence is resolved, we're going to activate Multi Faker, which is uh, Impermanence's BFF. That's going to special summon itself to the field. And then Multi Faker is going to activate and be able to summon me another Old Guys card from my deck to the field. Unfortunately, we haven't got any more copies of Silquitus, so uh, none of the options here are really too good. Um, Melisee technically floats. Kukiri could negate something, but I don't need to do that right now. And Marionetta has no quick effects, so. We'll see. I go for Melaseek and um, um, I don't think Hextia is a hard one to be a turn. I can't remember if it is. I mean, it might be. I'm going to assume it is. But if not, then at least I have a Melaseek there that I can activate later on. Uh, realizing I haven't got access to Silquitus right now, I'm going to use Manifestation. Bring back Silquitus. And so um, I have that on the field to bounce cards back to my opponent's hand. And really right now, this is a very, very comfortable position for all guys. I have Negation in form of Hextia. To negate spells and traps. I have Solemn Strike on board to negate any special summon. I have Silquitus, which can uh, um, bounce one of his cards back from the field to the hand. And I believe there's a protocol. But then, very, very surprisingly, Fuzzy is going to tribute two of my monsters and he's going to give me a Lava Golem. That really, really sucks. Like I said, tributing really, really hurts because you can't respond to it. And I want to respond to it and stop it, but nothing I can do about it. Silkwood is very fortunately also floats like Mellow Seek and it's going to allow me to add an Auto Guys trap card from my graveyard to my hand. So eventually I'll be able to get my Manifestation back and Mellow Seek now floats and I'm going to be able to get my Kukiri back to my hand. So um, yeah, he's very, very smartly uh, managed to get rid of two forms of my interruption here, but um, I managed to gain back resources. Um, and like I was saying earlier, I'm still in a very comfortable position. Solemn Strike is still sitting there. Um, I've now got a big boy in form of Lava Golem. I've got Kunkiri to negate attacks and they also to get a face up effect. So this is really, really, really ideal here. So um, uh, Fuzzy is having a look at the board. He's trying to decide what I think way up his options here. And he's going to go for a summon. And he's going to summon out Infernoid. Um, I can't. Antra. Antra. They've all weird names. Infernoid Antra. Which does have an effect that says you can target one face up card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. So it has a bounce effect. Um, I'm thinking to myself, do I want to use Solemn Strike on this? I say, nah, do you know what? I'm going to save the Solemn Strike. He only has one more card in the hand and Strike is really, really versatile. He uses Antra to activate his effect. But I'm going to respond with all guys protocol. Allow me to tribute. Or uh, is it a tribute or whatever? Send one other face of all guys card you control to the graveyard. And that's going to let me negate and destroy his monster effect. Now, while Melusik also floats when it's sent, it's sent to the graveyard, Hexia also floats when it's sent to the graveyard, which is really nice as well. Um, so yeah, Hexia is going to get me more cards, although there really isn't really more cards I need to get for my deck, so there's no point in activating it. And yeah, at this point here, um, I, I have way too many interruptions really for Fuzzy to be able to play with. Um, I have full control of the board um, and with a lava gold on my side of the field as well I'm gonna be able to swing for 3k next turn and um, yeah this is kind of what all guys love to do all guys love to kind of just push their opponent to resources uh, you have to be careful when playing the deck it can you can make mistakes very easy when you're learning this deck and miss certain interruptions but um, otherwise it's a really really fun control deck to play so Fuzzy Huzzy, thank you very much for playing, challenging me dude, and guys I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want the depth profile for this, do let me know, I'll be happy to share that with you. And yeah, thank you as always uh, for tuning into my videos. If you want to challenge me to a video, feel free to add me at Stand by Main on PSN. I'm online almost every single day, so feel free to challenge me, and thank you as always for watching. 
I'll see you soon. Take care.